Hello everybody, welcome to the TriStar Gym channel. Today's episode, we're talking about UFC 300. I think it might have been, I can't say it's the greatest UFC of all time, but it's among the greatest UFCs of all time. It did not disappoint. We're going to talk about Pereira. We're going to talk about almost all the fights. There were so many great fights. There were so many big fights. Every fight was... Every fight could have been a main event on that card. Every single fight could have been a main event on a fight night at minimum. It was a phenomenal, phenomenal card. However, I want to start off by talking about Max Holloway's KO. Was it the greatest KO in MMA history? I give you guys a list of my four top KOs in MMA history. Make sure you fill in the poll. Put in your vote. I'm going to go through the four greatest KOs in MMA history. I know there's many. I, I keep thinking of more and more KOs. I keep thinking of all the years I've been going to UFC and, and all the fights around the world. There are so many great KOs. And usually the KO has a story behind it. It's not what punch you through. It's not what kick you through. It's not when you did it. It's not because there was one second left. Max Holloway knocks out Justin Gaethje with one second left. It wasn't all. It wasn't just because of that. A lot of times it's the buildup. It's the buildup to the fight. Now, number one on the list, I put number one on the list. I put Aldo versus McGregor. Let me open up this list. Aldo versus McGregor. McGregor is insulting the greatest featherweight of all time. He is just insulting everything about Jose Aldo. Then Jose Aldo pulls out with a bad rip and everybody with a bad rip. The first time they were supposed to fight each other, they went on a world tour. And McGregor's lips were flapping in the wind. It was just the most brutal bullying. Just bullying Jose Aldo nonstop. Jose Aldo pulls out. And a lot of people are like, no, he's in Jose Aldo's head. This is not right. How could Jose pull out? Hey, you got to give him You got to give him the benefit of the doubt. The guy's a professional MMA fighter. He could get hurt in practice. That's not abnormal. It happens all the time. Absolutely. Even to the toughest, strongest, most athletic guys are going to get injured. We give him the benefit of the doubt. Now, they postpone. Everything's postponed. McGregor's talking nonstop. Smack. He's building up the fight. Even though the fight is off, he's building up for the next one. They finally get the fight signed again, and they're fighting. Guys, I was at the weigh-ins. I, I had the fighters fighting. I was watching them behind the curtain as they were getting ready to make it to the scale. Now, I had fighters who were fighting on the prelim card and the undercard, so we had weighed in and sat down in the back, and we're watching now the main event guys come in. And the main event is Jose Aldo and McGregor. And let me tell you something. The UFC had to keep them separated both teams were cursing at one another, super hostile. This is not fake, guys. The hostility is 100% real. The hostility between the two. It's not like they're super nice to each other and then the camera turns on and then they start going at it and they're putting on a WWF show, WWE, whatever you want to call it. No, I guess I could tell you. I was sitting there in my seat behind the curtain the guys were rehydrating and McGregor comes out and Aldo's crew comes out and the UFC has to keep them separated and they're cursing each other. They're insulting each other. These guys absolutely despise one another. You guys all saw the fight. There's nobody in the world who didn't see that fight because after the KO happened, it was all over the internet. It was 13 seconds long. The fight was just 13 seconds. All that hype. Literally over a year of hype. Jose Aldo gets knocked out in round one. What was so incredible about that fight was that the fact that most people didn't notice this, which, which I find crazy, is Jose Aldo throws a right hand left hook. As he's throwing that left hook, he gets hit by McGregor's left. His lights are out. Jose Aldo is out. His eyes close, his body goes limp, but that left hook still traveling through the air. I've never seen this before, guys. I've seen countless countless fights, countless. Jose Aldo is throwing a right-hand left hook. As he's throwing the left hook, he gets knocked out. As he's falling towards the ground, that left hook is still traveling through the air, and guess what? It hits McGregor on the side of the table. It cuts him. It cuts McGregor. The man was knocked out. 
and still landed a powerful punch on McGregor's head. Of course, McGregor, you know, he didn't he didn't uh, wobble or anything like that, but he gets on top of Aldo, hits him two more times with a couple of hammer fists. John Marth McCarthy, uh, I'm, I'm forgetting who the ref was now. The ref jumps in, breaks it up, and Jose Aldo is out. 13 seconds, arguably the greatest KO of all time. Next on the list, guys, the buildup for Holly Holm versus Rousey was insane. Why was it insane? Joe Rogan called Ronda Rousey a one in a history. Not a one in a lifetime, not in a one in a generation, not a one in a, you know, a century. No, 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 no. He called her a one in a history, meaning in all of history. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, like we got to rewind. He's talking about the Big Bang. We're talking about 15 billion years. Out of 15 billion years, like this is only going to happen once. Like it, it, it was an insane amount of hype behind Ronda Rousey. Okay, now I'm not gonna say she was worth it or not worth it. That's for you guys to decide. But there was so much hype behind Ronda Rousey. It was insane. Now she's fighting Holly Holm. Holly Holm was a great kickboxer, a great boxer, but everybody thought she's gonna get taken down because she has no ground game. She's a blue belt at best. Ronda Rousey's a black belt, and she's been. Oh, she's a world-class black belt in the female. Like, she's just like she's head and shoulders above any girl in grappling. And Holly Holm is a blue belt at best. She's on the lower scale of the female grapplers. She's on the lower scale, and everybody's like, "There's no way she won't, she's gonna stop Ronda's takedowns." There's just no way she's an Olympian. Ronda's an Olympian. Ronda's a silver medalist. Like, she's an Olympian. She can't be beat on the in the, in the grappling. She can't be beat. Guys, there was so much drama in that fight. Not only before the fight. Of course, before the fight, Ronda unleashes a storm of insults, you know, because they kind of push each other at the way. And that clip went viral. The whole, the whole world was watching that hype. It was in Australia. 55,000 fans, record-breaking attendance. Before that, it was uh, Toronto. 50,000 people. George St. Pierre versus Jake Shields. I had five fighters on that card that night. Now this is a new record. 55,000 people in Australia. You all saw it. There's nobody in the world who didn't see that KO. The head kick KO. The memes were vicious, guys. There was so much blowback for all the things that Ronda did and said in the past. You guys, before that fight, she had done tough. And we saw her personality. And people were, it's very controversial personality. People were using the B word. People were like, just, it was vicious. And the memes after her loss were the most vicious I've ever seen. I've never seen people step on somebody for losing so badly. It was insane. Even her family had to write a public statement. One of her sisters had to make a public statement saying, look, these memes, the people coming after us, the people insulting my sister, it's just so vicious. She had to come out and make a public statement. It was insane. Guys, I was there. For the Jose Aldo knockout, I was there for, not the Ronda Rousey, Holly Holm, but I was there when Ronda lost to, I'm forgetting, uh, she got knocked out again, with Nunez. But the Holly Holm backlash was so severe. Guys, I did a post, I did a post fight analysis of that fight, Ronda versus Holly. I woke up the next morning, I was over a million views, and then YouTube took my video off the channel. They took it out. They suspended it. Why? Because I used pictures or a little bit of footage from UFC. They, 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 they what, do you, what do you call it when they, when they block your video? This video is no longer available. They banned my video. I woke up the next day. I was like, man, a million people watch this. Like, I, I just I couldn't believe the memes and the attention this KO got. Everybody saw that KO. Then we had Mass Vidal versus Askren. Mass Vidal and Askren is not even a world title fight. Why are we talking about a fight? It's a main card, yes, but we're talking about the best KOs in history. Why would a non-title fight be so highly ranked? Let me tell you why, okay? Ben Askren was the Bellator champion. And as the active champion, they cut him. They didn't want him. Imagine that, the Bellator champion getting cut. Why was he getting cut? Well... They thought he was boring. He was the most boring guy. His fight is boring. And one one time I remember he was on the mic and he said he had won his fight and the fans were booing. For those of you 
You all know Ben Askren. He takes people down. He's a mauler. He just kind of like people thought, found him boring. I liked him. I like watching his takedowns. I like I like watching his chain wrestling. But a lot of people thought he was super boring. One, he has like a bit of a dad bod, and so that's not really impressive. People have a stigma against that for some reason. Then he takes his opponents down. He kind of mauls them, but he kind of like gives like these hammer fists. They're not super powerful, and it's just like you know you're in for 25 minutes of of just holding. He's a genius wrestler. He's a genius wrestler, but a lot of holding going on. People hated him. They would boo. And then I remember one time on the mic, he he wanted to fight. Fans were booing, and he's like, if the fans are booing, that means I'm doing my job. That's what he said on the mic. Arguably the worst thing I'd ever heard anybody say on the mic in terms of marketing. The worst. Instead of like, okay, next one I promise you guys a finish. Next time I promise you guys I'm going to keep it standing up. Like, redeem yourself. No, no. He's like, yeah, guys, pay for your, pay for my salary buy tickets and i'm gonna bore the hell out of you like it was the worst marketing maneuver i've ever seen he gets cut he's floating around begging to get in ufc begging like making even literally he made a music video to get in ufc nobody wanted him dana white famously said ben Askren makes john fitch look like anthony pettis john fitch another guy who got a he was a great fighter as well one went on an incredible ufc winning streak Fought George St. Pierre in a very exciting fight. However, he was being criticized in UFC for being a little bit boring. Some fans were, didn't like his fighting style. But Dana White was saying, compared to Askren, John Fitch is Showtime Pettis. Now, Showtime, you guys all know, he's a highlight reel. He's a human highlight reel. Ben Askren is coming into UFC. People think he's going to bore us to death. He's going to grab Masvidal. He's going to hold him down. How did he get in UFC? Why did they let him in UFC? Everybody's kind of complaining. like, he, And he's trying to trash talk Masvidal. Masvidal is promising. I was there, guys. I was there. I had guys fighting on that card as well. I, the beef was real, guys. I'm telling you. Masvidal wanted to kill Ben Askren. Like he was saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to destroy Ben Askren. He was telling him, it's not over. Even when I knock him out, it's not going to be over. Like he's talking about we're going to have altercations in the street. Masvidal absolutely despises him. Everybody thought Ben Askren was going to take him down, maul him for 15 minutes, and it was going to be a snooze fest. What did we get? We got a flying knee across the cage. And Masvidal tricked us all. Masvidal started with his hands behind his back, leaning on the cage. It was the biggest rope of dope since Ali. It was the biggest rope of dope since Ali. What did he do? He put his hands behind the... The fight starts. He walks away from Ben Askren, leans up against the fence like he's about to smoke a cigarette, puts his hands behind his back like he's waiting for a bus or something, and then sprints <laughs> towards Ben Askren, does a flying knee, knocks him out. But not only did he knock him out, he cracked him with two more shots. The referee had to run at top speed. It shocked us all. It was the most unexpected KO, and that's why it's on the list. Guys, that KO was played 24 hours a day all over YouTube nonstop till today. They still play it. It's insane how much, how much, how many views that KO got. And of course, what happened last night? Max Holloway. By the way, I gotta say, he looks better at 155 than 145. I can't believe how thick and, and muscular he was, and how quick he was, and how fast and how powerful, how powerful he was. Now I'm gonna talk about the fight in detail later. I'm just gonna cover the KO because I think there's a lot of there's a lot of issues with that fight. There was two major eye pokes that could have made that made a whole difference in the fight, but I'm not gonna to touch that now. Holloway versus Gaethje. BMF title. Now I like the BMF title. Some people think it's dumb. I like it. If you get guys who are like blood and guts fighters who are technical as well, but they they, they always put up great fights. They're not there to win the points. They're not there thinking about thinking about what the judge is going to do if I put my foot. Like They're not playing points here. They're trying to win. They're fighting. They have a fight. This, it's hard to describe. They want to exchange. They want to fight. Think about this. Think about this for a second. Max Holloway won all five rounds. He won one, one through four. Going into the fifth. He's still trying to finish. He's still trying to fight. Now, I, if you're being generous, there's one round I think you can give to uh, Gaethje. I think it was the second one. If you're being generous, it, it was close. Second round was close. I'm not going to, I don't want to get in deep in that topic, but think about Holloway. There was like 30 seconds left and he's pointing at Gaethje, get in the middle. Let's get in the middle. Like, why would you do that? You're winning the fight. 
that's that's a BMF. He's like, get in the middle. Come on, let's go in the middle right now. Let's trade in the middle. And of course, Gaethje, being a BMF, he's like, okay, sure, this is a great idea. Let's stand in the middle and trade. One second left. Gaethje gets knocked out. The referee is jumping in, stops the fight with one second left. Now, the drama is that these guys... Is but Holloway doesn't need to do this, and Holloway is asking for it. Like, why? I understand if Gaethje was like, "Let's get in the middle, stop moving around, let's get." Max Holloway <laughs> did the craziest, and he's done it in the past, of course. But it was so crazy to do that. For he, I don't think he cares about the BMF title. He wants to be world champion. He wants to be UFC champion. But that's what makes him BMF. You know, he, he doesn't care. And he, at the last minute, he's like, hey, "I'm winning, even though I'm winning all five rounds. Let's get in the middle and let's trade." That was insane. Guys, I'm looking at your stats here. 53% of you think Holloway and Gaethje was the greatest KO of all time. 28% say Aldo. Holloway's only, Holly versus Rousey is only 3%. That's shocking to me. That's really, really shocking. Masvidal, Askren, 16%. Guys, don't underestimate the Holly Holm. Holly Holmes and uh, Ronda Rousey. That was a spectacular KO. The main reason why that KO was so great is because everybody was marketing Ronda Rousey as invincible. Like, you can't beat her, it's impossible, and don't, no, nobody will ever beat her. It was a hype like never seen, like we've never seen before. Okay, guys, I also want to talk about Pereira's knockout. A fantastic knockout. It won't make the list, not for top five, okay? Not for top four. But it was a phenomenal KO. One of the best of all time as well. He landed that KO. Look closely how he landed that KO. He hit Jamal Hill. When he threw that hook, and we call that a Mexican hook, okay? Like, a hook is like this, an uppercut is like this. A Mexican hook, when you hook to the face, it's a diagonal, okay? It's a 45 degree. I love that hook. It's a fantastic hook. It's sneaky. It has a little bit longer reach than a traditional hook. And it has more, um, it has a, obviously a different angle than uppercut. Because when you throw the uppercut, if the guy leans back, you miss completely. When you throw the Mexican hook, if the guy leans back, it's still, it's still following through. Okay, so the Mexican hook, we call it Mexican hook because Mexicans were popularizing it back in the day. He hits him with a Mexican hook and he lands, watch that fight, he lands with the pinky. Everybody says you got to punch with these two knuckles. But this KO landed with the pinky. And let me tell you something. Jack Dempsey, he wrote a book about punching. I read it many years ago. It's a great book. It's a phenomenal book. And he says, you know, in the beginning of the book, he's like, look, I want you to make a fist and look down on your pinky. That's what he says. He says, <laughs> listen, guys, Jack Dempsey, for those of you who don't know, one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. He fought when footage was black and white. He was smaller, beating heavier guys. He would literally beat guys 50, 60 pounds heavier than him. He's one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. If you're a boxing connoisseur, you know the name Jack Dempsey. One of the original heavyweight champions. He writes a book about, you know, like, uh, he calls it the false step. He has a great, crazy philosophy. He's a very intelligent guy. Very, very intelligent guy. And in the book, he's like, hey, look, I want you to make a fist. And I want you to look at your pinky right now. And I want you to see that's the most powerful part of your body. He says, when you punch somebody in the face, you got to land with your pinky. Now, you think, why would you want to land with your pinky? Isn't it the more fragile? And he says, no. He says, look at your forearm. You know, when you look at your forearm, he says, look at these two knuckles. Sorry, these two knuckles here. The one everybody's taught to fight, punch with. There's nothing supporting them down here. See that? There's nothing supporting them. So when I punch with these two knuckles, they're going to bend. My, my fist is going to flex like this. See? And he says, when your fist is going to flex like this, power is going to bleed. He says, look at the pinky knuckle. If you go down the pinky knuckle, you have a straight bone here. There's a bone here. See this forearm here? The force vector is going to go down, down your pinky, and trace all the way down your forearm. So he says, when I hit with my pinky, there's no give here. The force doesn't bleed. If I hit with my index and the middle finger here, there's going to be a bleeding. Okay, So you're not going to notice it because it's happening so fast, but there's going to be a bleeding. Why? Because, look, there's no, there's no bone supporting this area. Okay. Now, if you hit in the middle, now it's kind of like you're hitting, like you're teeter-tottering left and right. If you hit with the pinky... That bone is pushing back into the target. It's pushing back in. <sighs> Look, 
I've seen, when people land KOs, I always try to, one of the things I look at is what part of the fist made contact. And believe you me, 99% of KOs, I can tell you, most most fighters are trained to hit with these two knuckles and we all we all see it all the time. These two knuckles land KOs. I won't say it's not good. It's very, very good. But there's something to be said about the pinky. Now, I got to go back and rewatch all of Pereira's fights to see all those KOs. Is he always hitting with the pinky? And I didn't notice it earlier because I watched it just not shortly not long ago, just a few minutes ago, I rewatched it again. You know, you got to watch the little details sometimes. And I noticed, wait a second. Not only did his fist barely touch Jamal Hill, barely touched him. It didn't even hit the chin. It hit like the cheekbone. Okay, like live on fight night, I, I it was fast. But on the replay, we could all see kind of hit the cheekbone. And the cheekbone's not the best place to KO somebody. It's really not. You don't see that many KOs. When guys get hit in the cheekbone. Sometimes you see them get wobbled. You'll see their eye puff up. It'll close their eyes, sure. But knock them out flat like that, very rare. But, okay, usually we see KOs at the jaw, the chin, of course, the temple, just behind the ear. Those are the worst target. Like, the guys get flattened. The cheekbone, very rare. Not only did him in the cheekbone, but the fist almost like didn't touch it. Jamal's... Like, guys, it was a real punch. I'm not trying to say Jamal took a dive or anything. Like that. Not at all. All I'm trying to say is I think Jack Dempsey is correct. <laughs> you know, like, he's he's right. He makes a big deal out of his, uh, out of his book. I forget what it's called, actually. But he, just look up Jack Dempsey Boxing. You'll download it for free. It's all over the internet. And it's a fascinating book. In the beginning of the, you know, he talks about how you should fall when you throw a punch, you're falling. You know, it's like, anyways, it's a, it's a great, it's a great book. He talks about, like, Anyways, I don't want to say this, but like he's, he talks about, what if I drop a baby off a th third-story building? And he's like, look, the body weight of even a baby can hurt you. You know, he's obviously not throwing, he's just doing a thought experiment, right? He's not trying to say throw babies out of windows. No, not of course, of course not. He's trying to tell you, look, body weight falling and you're punching, your body weight has to fall. And he has these great, great philosophies. The guy was a phenomenal boxer. So if you guys are interested, check out Jack Dempsey's book. He barely touched... Jamal Hill, but I think because he landed with the pinky and it was a Mexican hook, there was a diagonal here. He's transferring more force than most people throw with a hook. He's got the great look. Here's another great question. Is Alex Pereira the greatest kickboxer of all time? Like, I got to sit down and think about it because I think the answer could be yes. Like, he could be arguably the greatest kickboxer of all time. He won glory in two divisions. He came in and he won in UFC in two different divisions. He's not just winning. He's annihilating people. He beat Adesanya, who was, people were saying he's the greatest well to, uh, middleweight of all time. And then this guy comes in and cleans his clock. Yes, he, he lost the last one, but he beat him twice. And, and he beat him three out of four, three out of four meetings. Alex Pereira is arguably the greatest kickboxer of all time. Okay, guys, I know I droned on. I, I went on a tangent, droned on, but let's talk now about UFC 300. I'm not taking any questions on anything else. And of course... I'm always doing super chats and non-super chats at the same time. Guys, make sure to use level up 50 off to get 50% off anything on jujiclub.com. Make sure to check out kimorapowertrainer.com, the greatest way to build your core. Check out that website, guys. Don't miss out on jujiclub.com. Use your promo code level up and get 50% off. Okay, guys, I'm taking comments and questions now on the fights only. And there was a lot of great fights, so much to talk about. Regarding UFC 13, an incredible night of fights. Put Leon versus Kumaro. That was a title fight. Leon down 3-1, to one, losing the fifth. Kumaro was pound for pound, number one, unbeatable. And Leon beat him with a head kick. Believe me, I thought of it. Believe me, I thought of it. That was one of the most incredible KO comebacks in history. There's so many great KOs. I was thinking about it. man. I, I couldn't narrow it down to four, but I had to. You're right. That one deserves to be on the list as well. Okay, guys. Another crazy fight that, that night. There were so many crazy fights, but one of them was Jaleel Turner. Jaleel Turner, round one, comes out. Guys, I want to see BMF. You know the next BMF fight? Meccano's got to be in there. <laughs> Meccano's a wild one. I like Meccano. He's a wild one. His post-fight speech was uh, crazy, wild. He's, a, he's got that BMF spirit, let's just say. 
He's fighting Jaleel Turner. In the first few seconds, Jaleel pokes him to the body with a teep. A teep is like a push kick, front kick, whatever you guys call it. I know a lot of you guys in the U.S., you call it front kick. In Thai, we call it a teep. Okay, a lot of you guys know it as a teep as well. You got a lot of you guys do Muay Thai. He hurts him right away. Hits him with two of them. You see Mekano all kind of crunching down. Man, this is no good. Jaleel Turner is six foot three or six foot four. Like he's a nice tall for a lightweight. It's incredibly tall. It looks really bad. Like we're talking about the first 15 seconds here. This is really bad. Mekano's like in pain. They lock up. Mekano takes him down, controls him. They get back to their feet eventually. Mekano, you got to say, he kind of like took back the, you know, he's controlling the round. He's winning that round. Mekano's in the, in the lead. Jaleel Turner drops him. Crack straight down the middle, drops Mekano, and he walks off. We're talking about like maybe there's like 15 seconds left on the clock, 20 seconds left on the clock. That's plenty of time to finish. That's plenty of time. You get on top of the guy and you keep hammering him. 10, 15 seconds, it can happen. They'll stop the fight. What does Jaleel do? I think he made a mistake. I think he regrets, regrets it quite badly because Jaleel is a monster. He had knocked out Bobby Green just before this. I mean, the guy's a nightmare. The guy's a nightmare. Dealing with Jaleel Turner ain't no easy task. Even Gamrat barely got out of that fight. Like it was, he gave Gamrat everything he can handle. Now Mekano's in trouble in the beginning of the round. He's in trouble at the end of the round. Jaleel flattens him with a shot, and Jaleel kind of walks off. As he's walking off, <laughs> Mekano recovers, gets back up, and Jaleel's like complaining to the ref. It's like, dude, the ref didn't stop the fight. You're supposed to fight until the ref pulls you off. This was a major mistake. He had that fight. It seemed like he could have ended it. They go into round two. He gets taken down. He gets finished. You know, I think he, if I remember correctly, he landed some nice shots also in round two. I can't remember, but round one, it was so possible for Jalil Turner to finish. I think Jalil Turner is going to be very successful in UFC, but this one, this one could have been in, could have been his. Okay, guys, give me some more on UFC 300. No other topics as of now. We'll open that up later on. Better than UFC 100. Man, UFC 100 was pretty amazing too, man. We can't forget how great UFC 100 was. Brock Lesnar, George St. Pierre, it was a phenomenal night as well. Very hard for me to say which one was better. The Buckley kick, yes, the Buckley kick was definitely uh, a contender to be on the list. Coach, your voice is too wise. We got to turn up that volume, sir. Is my volume not good? Is my volume not good? Guys, give me a thumbs up if my volume is good. Usually I do a sound check, but I'm getting... Uh, I think I'm like a purple belt down button pushing, guys. I think I'm confident enough. After 159 episodes, UFC 300 didn't disappoint. Give up. To my boy, Poatan. Forget about the rounds. Forget about the scorecards. Even he's behind because sometimes his goal is to focus on the target and land lights out and still. Shiz, my man. I thought I, I thought the last time around, Shiz, Mr. Shiz, the top G of the chat room, I thought you went against Poatan. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, I must be reading this wrong. But I see that you're back uh, on the Poatan uh, team. And yes, it was a phenomenal one thing we're gonna have to talk about we're gonna have to, have to do a whole segment is this guy the greatest kickboxer of all time is this guy the greatest fighter combat athlete of all time is he are we watching the greatest combat athlete of all time he just got in UFC and he's won two divisions already it's incredible what an incredible career what do you think what do you attribute Max's success to question mark do you think he wins if he doesn't break Justin's nose early that's from Overlap 618. Guys, I got to talk about this fight in more in detail. First of all, Max poked the eye twice. And man, for, for those of you who don't spar with MMA, like I spar with MMA gloves. And I'll tell you something. When you get poked in the eye, I don't care if you're Brock Lesnar. If you get poked in the eye, it can change the whole fight. Now, the poke happened twice and it was bad because it was each eye. Justin Gaethje's vision might have been severely impaired, but here's the problem. Justin Gaethje will never talk about it. He's just the type of guy that will fight on no matter what. I don't care if he's like, it's just, it was, it's such an insane, like the second time Max 
poked his eye. I thought I was sitting down watching the fight with my wife, and I was like, you know what? The ref has to take a point. Like, this is insane. Like, you got to give him the whole five minutes. This is too important. Of Like, it was a severe eye poke. And the thing is, people who've never been poked in the, in the eye, your vision doesn't come back 100%. Sometimes it's blurry. Your tears are, your eyes are tearing. It just, you're throwing you're throwing punches. You're trying to find your target, and your eyes eyes are blurry. Now he had both eyes injured. Now sometimes you get poked in the eye, and it's not so bad, and you're perfectly fine. I just find that it could have been a major issue. Now I'm not making excuses, of course. Max Holloway won. Justin Gaethje didn't take his full five minutes. But the thing is, how bad was his eye? And he'll never tell us. That's the thing. He'll probably never mention it. He'll probably never discuss it. Maybe he was seeing three, four, five Max Holloways when he was in there. Sometimes you get poked in the eye and you're seeing like double, triple. He didn't look right. His striking didn't look right. His movement didn't look right. He wasn't finding his target. Did it have to do more with the eye poke? But also at the same time, you had Max Holloway looking better than he ever did. I like him at 155. I think he's, his weight cuts are maybe holding him back. Fighting at 155 is something that I'm really excited to see. Max Holloway at 155, I think he can maybe surprise the surprises maybe it's a better weight class for him now at the end of round one max holloway threw a back kick while J justin gaethje was ducking down and it hit him in the nose he had i think he had a broken nose that's such a nightmare two eye pokes one well, I, the second eye poke happened in round two but you got to think about this early in the fight he had a broken nose and two eye pokes that's bad news really bad news I hope they both got a bonus. I really hope they both got a bonus. For him to fight through those two eye pokes and a broken nose, the man deserves uh, a bonus. Guys, we are talking about UFC 300 only. No other topics as of now. Check out my super cat chat coach. Okay, I did that already. There's a chance Hill took a dive. That's from Phil. No, absolutely not. It's impossible he took a dive. I'm telling you. I've watched countless UFC fights, ringside, octagon side. I'm telling you, those are real punches. They're not fake. They're 100%. That's an insane thing to say. Potan has got the greatest left hook, arguably, of all time. I've said it before this fight on this channel. I've said it all, like, repeatedly. I've watched his glory fights. The man has the most dangerous left hook. That you, you would have to say that people in glory are conspiring like it's impossible i'm telling you this man is special he has a credible he's got the greatest left hook i've ever seen in kickboxing not boxing not all combat sports but definitely in kickboxing and mma he's got the greatest left hook of all time rakik looked great before jerry stopped him that's from tryhard you're a hundred percent rakik was looking amazing in round one jerry was getting caught but pushing through Jiri was getting caught and pushing through, and Jiri is blessed with power. He's a phenomenal athlete. He ends up stopping Rakik, but Rakik was looking amazing. He was well prepared, but Jiri has a heart of a lion, pushed through and pushed through, and that fight looked like Rakik was running away with it. Not only was he landing on the chin, he was kicking, killing that leg. It looked like Jiri's leg was not going to last the rest of the fight. What an incredible comeback. Rakic has nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, he's a phenomenal. He's shown his improvements. Like, he's put in a lot of hard work. You could tell that he's improved immensely. Armin versus Islam. Who wins? I would definitely ch choose Islam. Like, I didn't go through their all their fights, but right now, like, after watching what Armin did against, uh, you know, he fought well, but um, I just don't feel he's at Islam's level. That was also a close fight. Armin and, and uh, Oliveira was a very close fight. However, I give it I gave it to Armin. If that Dars at the end of the fight was really tight and Armin was struggling to get out and I felt like it was cutting off his blood supply, I would have gave it to Oliveira, but I don't think it did. Okay, round one, I gave to Oliveira. Round two, you had to give it to Armin. It would be insane to say anything else. I mean, he, he hurt Oliveira. He was grounded and pounded, had him all bladed up. Round three, Armin was controlling, but then that Dars came out. 
Armin defended it beautifully. If he didn't, if he was twisting and turning in the wind and be like fighting for his life, I would have given it to Oliveira. But he wasn't. He was completely cool. That Dars wasn't choking him. He had defended it early. He saw it coming. And uh, I think Takirian deserved that win. Do you agree that Jiri is really bad technically? Question mark. I know you can't say it word for word because you don't want to piss people off. But if you think so, don't disagree. That's from local man shakes fist. He's not bad technically. He's just against Rakic. Look, he has a traditional style. And I think you got to blend that traditional style with karate. Excuse me. You got to blend those traditional styles, i.e. karate, taekwondo. Um, yeah, that's really the two, two traditional styles I would draw from. You got to blend it with Muay Thai and boxing. Okay, now... He's a good boxer, but he's not blending it enough with the Muay Thai. He had a wide stance, like he has his horse stance, like he's doing a a karate fight, and he's just getting his legs chopped. I mean, Poatan just crushed his legs, and Rakic was crushing his legs. He's just got to make adjustments. He's being a bit reckless in there. I don't say it's bad technique. He's just not learning how to use that technique properly. He's relying on his physicality. He's relying on his toughness. He's relying on his natural power. He needs to make adjustments. Alex Pereira, Deontay Wilder of MMA. No, 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 no. Don't say that. Francisco De Silva says Alex Pereira is the Deontay Wilder of MMA. No, he's not. Deontay Wilder never beat the legends. He never beat the legends. He beat guys, you know, that were good. He beat Ortiz. I would say that was probably the best guy he's ever beaten. Ortiz is a legitimate contender. You know, he's a legitimate heavyweight. Very good fighter, but not a legend. Pereira is beating legends. He beat Adesanya, for goodness sake, guys. He beat Adesanya at welterweight. He's a legend. Alex Pereira will go down as one of the greatest of all time, and I don't know if anybody can beat him. Like, I know I said uh, uh, Shamayev can beat him. It comes up, but now I'm starting to doubt. Like, I think Shamayev can still take him down, but he better book that fight soon because Poetan's going um, to get harder and harder to beat. Think about how the young Alexander Pereira is in his career. MMA career, I should say. Um, Specifically. Who is the hardest matchup for Pereira at lightweight? Light heavyweight. Well, listen, if they bring back John Jones, John Jones will beat him. John Jones got too many years of wrestling. Way too many years. He'll just be real careful early on and just get him down on the ground and just crush him. Okay. Um, can John Jones get back to light heavyweight? Will he ever go back down? Will he ever, you know, get organized? I don't know. Coach, isn't it mind-blowing that Poatan has the ability to turn off any opponent's lights off? Example, KO Izzy after four rounds of losing. Doesn't worry about scoring sometimes. Scary thoughts? That's from Shiz. Yeah, listen, he's hurt so many people with that left hook. You can tell how confident he is. You know, if you had a if you had a weapon that you believe you can uh, literally put anybody to sleep as soon as you touch them, it's like you know you're going to touch them. It's a matter of time. And, you know... Uh, he didn't have to worry too much about the at the Sanya's takedowns. And you know, Jamal Hill also doesn't not the type of guy who was gonna kinda wrestle you to the ground. But he should have. You know, he should have tried to take he should have even if he didn't get the takedown, he should have made Alex Pereira work up against the fence. Make him wrestle. Take away that power. <clears throat> Guys, don't forget to check out jujiclub.com. Promo code level up fifty off. Please make sure to use the promo code. You get fifty percent off absolutely anything on Juji Club. Uh oh, I missed another super chat. Hey coach, I know you said UFC only th I know you said UFC 300 only questions, but this fight was announced at 300. Does Dustin Poirier have any chance against Islam? What are the chances percentage-wise? Do you give him to upset Islam Makachev? That's from overlap. Listen, that is an exciting fight. Man, you got to think, you know, what 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 Khabib did to Poirier, you're going to think, look, Islam's just going to do that. But I think Poirier is getting better. I think Poirier is getting wiser. He really wants to wear gold. It's not going to be that easy time around. He's had a couple of years now to, you know, 
get ready for an Islam Makachev. He knows what it tastes like. He fought Khabib. He knows what he's expecting. He's expecting somebody who's going to be pitting him against the fence using a combination of wrestling and judo. They're going to be incredibly strong. I still pick Islam Makachev. Don't get me wrong. I'm still picking Islam Makachev, but I would say it would be a 60-40 type fight. 60-40 for Islam Makachev. Guys, the great uh, in our poll here, we have almost a thousand votes, and fifty-two percent of you believe Holloway versus Gaethje was the greatest knockout of all time. And second place is Aldo versus McGregor. Okay, guys, let's see here. Three hundred K fight bonus was good motivation for Max Holloway. It raised the stakes for the fighters. That's from Hassan Haytham. Absolutely. He asked for two checks. He said, look, performance of the night and fight of the night he wanted. He wanted both. I think, honestly, I think he, I hope he got, I don't know, I didn't read who got what, but he, I think, I'm hoping they gave him 600K. Can Ankalev beat Pereira? How about John Jones or Aspinall at heavyweight? Can anybody beat Pereira in the world? John Jones, definitely. Aspinall, I don't know. Like I just I have to go back and review his, his wrestling ability because standing up, he's I think he gets knocked out by Pereira. Um Ankalev would be a good prospect, yeah. Ankalev can maybe be very difficult to beat, but he'd have to wrestle. He, you know, he'd have to go back and review the the wrestling ability and grappling ability, but standing up, he beats anybody, even John Jones. If John Jones dared stand up with Pereira, he'll get knocked out. He'll get flattened. Okay. But John Jones is not dumb. He's a very intelligent guy. Okay, no matter what people say about him, no matter what you hear about the news, in the news, whatever you guys are hearing, trust me, in the octagon, he's he's a smart guy. MT, thank you very much. Can you check my recent super chat? I meant Hill. Well, I wish you just would have repeated yourself right here. Guys, I'm only taking questions on 300. UFC 300 only. We're going to open it up later to ask me anything. Right now, it's just UFC 300. Why did no one talk about Justin's leg kicks? And do you think since Justin broke his nose, it contributed to get him getting KO'd since his mouth was open? Also, do you think Justin gets back to a title shot? That's from Andrew. Well, Andrew, I want to tell you, I think that's one of a that's one of the worst KOs I've seen. That could be a life changing KO, like it could ruin his career. He was out for a very long time. Um, it was a vicious punch. He took a lot of damage. Yes, that nose was definitely an issue. Guys, when you have a broken nose, yeah, you bleed outwardly, but you also ble bleed inwardly. Okay, so you're kind of like breathing in, in through your mouth, and that blood that's dripping down, you know, there's a post-nasal drip. It's dripping to your throat. So when you're breathing in, it's kind of like a like blood's getting in your lungs, you know, like you're trying to breathe it. And so you're kind of choking on it. It's just It's just disgusting. It does happen your air. Of course, air is not going through the nose. And the airway through the throat is also kind of like, you know, you're spitting blood. You're like, ah, you know, you're choking on your own blood. It disturbs the airway. The jaw is open because you want more air through your mouth and you get hit in the jaw. I don't know if clinching your jaw is actually any better. But your jaw is more exposed because when your jaw is open, it's just a, just a little bit easier to hit. Now, I don't know if it transfers more power or not. I can't be sure about that. There's no... There's no way, like, there's no study on that, of course. But it definitely hampered his fight. Look, he couldn't exchange as much as he'd want. When you break your nose, guys, I don't care how tough you are. When you break your nose, man, you're you're going to think twice before exchanging. Jan Blahovic almost beat Pereira. Izzy KO'd him, and I think Ankalev beats him with wrestling. That's from Jonathan Coates. Look, Blahovic wrestled Pereira in round one, almost took his back, etc. It was controversial a little bit. I thought Pereira won definitely. No, nope. look, I agree. If you can take, if you can take Pereira down consistently, you beat him. That's what I'm telling you. John Jones would beat him. 
Ankalev could get it done. Yes, he has the if his wrestling. It's, I just have to go back and review Ankalev's wrestling. I'm not sure how confident I am in it. Uh, I'd have to review his tape, but it's not that easy. Easier said than that. Yeah. So what? Adesanya knocked him out. He beat him one out of four, and Adesanya is arguably one of the greatest strikers of all time. No, he's he is definitely one of the greatest strikers of all time, but arguably the greatest striker of all time. Bruno Silva did a good job as well with Pereira. That's some MB broker. Pereira's gotten so much better than... Look, that was one of his earlier fights. And, of course, when you're new to MMA, you're worried about the takedown. You're learning so many new things. Pereira on Saturday was looking super comfortable, super at home in the octagon. There's an adjustment period. You can bring in anybody. I don't care if the, if the guy's a world champion boxer. Like, for instance, Bo Nickel. Okay, Bo Nickel, he missed a couple of takedowns. After his fight, he was, like, booing himself. After his fight, Bonico's booing himself. The guys, Bonico is one of the best American wrestlers ever. He's a phenom, but he had a bit of a, in his words, you know, not a good performance. I thought he had, I thought he he did well. I think he's gonna get a lot better. That performance, it's jitters, it's getting used to, you know, the drama you have to live through to get into the octagon. All this drama just for 15 minutes with a guy, and yeah, he got he got his takedowns. You know, he missed a couple of takedowns. He didn't do any damage on the ground in round one. Like he got position, but he didn't seem like he was punishing the guy. And usually, people don't last for a minute with him. Now they gave him a little bit better of a guy, and all of a sudden the guy's in round two. That's the way the cookie crumbles. Everybody's expecting him to win in the first 30, 40, 50 seconds, which is unreal. It's un, it's un it's an unsustainable uh, expectation. He's a phenomenal wrestler. He's a phenomenal. Uh, MMA fighter as he gets more comfortable in the octagon he's going to start getting quickly better quickly you can't compare this uh, the Pereira that fought Silva to the Pereira that fought on Saturday night and fought uh, Hill you can't per compare the two one of them was comfortable in the octagon the other one is like getting you know he's getting used to his new environment Max versus Islam. That's from Hindu Devotion. I would tell you it's a little early for Max to do that jump. You know, he's got to win a few more fights before he gets Islam. I think Islam right now would just take him down and just maul him. Not maul him, but control him. Control him, definitely. <clears throat> How would Pereira do against historical fighters that are not active? DC, Fedor, Kane, Nganu. Any southpaw wrestlers with a crazy chin. Guys, any good, good elite wrestler would beat Pereira. That's the thing. That's his Achilles heel, but just nobody he hasn't fought an elite wrestler yet. Like, have you guys noticed? The UFC's not crazy. They're not going to put him with an elite wrestler. They're not crazy. They're building up Poatan to be... I'm, I'm never telling you he's the greatest MMA fighter of all time. I'm always telling you he's the greatest kickboxer of all time. I put that question out there, but if you ask me, is Pereira the greatest MMA fighter of all time, I would tell you no. Because I envision that a lot of the DC uh, would take him down. Yeah, there's a lot of guys out there that would get him down to the ground and punish him. Now, standing up, I think he's probably the greatest, or at least, well, he's definitely one of the greatest kickboxers of all time. But, I mean, when I say greatest kickboxer of all time, are we talking about including the ties? I couldn't say yes, but in kickboxing, he's got the greatest left hook. At least I can say that. He's got the greatest left hook I've ever seen. Any kickboxer in history. Coach, how should Ankalev fight Pereira? That's from Ali Hader. I don't know. If, I don't think they'll put Ankalev with Pereira. I don't know. I'd be surprised if they do that. I honestly, I'd be surprised. I think he wants to fight Aspinall at heavyweight, and I think that makes sense. What do you think about Poatan getting a first degree black belt after a KO and no wrestling? That's from AFG Boy. Well, you know, is he a legitimate black belt? I've never rolled with a guy, so I don't know. But yeah, I think. 
I, I get it. You want to give it. You want you want to commemorate him on a special day. UFC 300 main event winner. He gets his black belt. He'll never forget it. But does he deserve that black belt? If he deserves that black belt, I'm all for it. It doesn't matter what he did in the fight. Does he deserve that? That, that you know that in the practice room. It doesn't have to happen on the fight. You you should know already whether he's a black belt or not before the fight, right? If he's a black belt, he, he's not going to go from brown belt to black belt in the middle of the fight. That now you decided he's actually a black belt. I don't think that's really what happened. I think they said, look, he's reached black belt level. We're going to honor him at UFC 300, and it'll be a great memory. That was the idea. It wasn't like, oh, you impress us with your kickboxing, therefore you deserve a black belt in jiu-jitsu. No, that wasn't the thinking. I think people are making way too much out of it. Mighty Mouse is a brown belt. Pereira, black belt now, question mark. That's from Sabi Lin. No, look, even if even if uh, Mighty Mouse is a brown belt, he's still a black belt officially. He can, he can go against any black belt in the world. Okay, so he, he's just like politics sometimes. You know, you want to make the guy wait because he doesn't know all the intricacies of gi like a lot of instructors are like that you know oh you don't know a deep half guard with all these little lapel tricks these guys don't need that they're so good at the basics they'll beat you with without those lapel tricks like i'm i'm the kind of instructor that if you can hang with the black belts i'll give you your black belt you know you got to be really 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 good not you have to fight like these other guys that used to train me no no you just got to be really really good you know you got to fight your way that's fine i'm fine with that but you got to be really really good if you're really really good and Mighty Mouse is very, 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 very good. He would crush a lot of black belts. Can Islam kill with Dustin? That's from Ali Hader. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's got punching power, man. Islam Makachev is a hard hitter. Make no question. No, make no doubt about it. Okay. The man is a hard puncher. What do you think of Holly Holm trying to wrestle Harrison? Question mark. That's some AFG. Guys, the, AFG, you're a gentleman and a scholar. Thank you for bringing that up. I picked Holly. That, she was one of my picks that went wrong. Okay, I had two bad picks that went wrong. Jaleel Turner. I picked Jaleel, and I think he had it in the bag, to be honest with you. I think he made a tactical error. He had me kind of flat on the ground and decided to do a walk-off KO. Like, he, oh, let me knock him down and walk off. No, dude, don't walk off. Get on him right now. You have two seconds to end the show. You got you got two seconds. He's stunned for two, three seconds before he can really defend himself. Like, jump on it. You And Jaleel Turner could do so much damage in so little time. That's, that's what you can't forget. He's the type of guy that if you open the window, he can flatten you. And the window's open, flattened, like, dude. And I remember when Mekano got up and he was, like, looking at the ref. He's like, man, this guy, like, it's, he's done. No, 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 he's not done, man. He's up on his feet. But I think Holly Holm made an even worse mistake. She, I picked Holly, too. Holly, let me, I still believe Holly could beat her. Now, I know Holly's 40 now. She's maybe not in her prime. I still think she can beat um, I'm sur I'm forgetting her name now. Harrison, Kyla Harrison. Why, why on earth did you wrestle with her? When Ronda grabbed Holly Holm in their fight, she framed on the hip. Guys, this is such an important maneuver. When you ever fight a judo guy, frame on the hip. I teach it in my headlock escape video for kids. I made a video for kids, which is also good for adults. But it's a classic wrestling. It's classic. So many people don't know it. It's it's pretty wild, but. She did it against Ronda Rousey. I did a breakdown video over it, and it worked. And she she got out of Ronda Rousey's, you know, Ronda Rousey likes a lot of the headlocks. She got out of it. She didn't do any of that against Harrison, any of it. She completely forgot what she was trained. When she fought Ronda Rousey, she was so well prepared. This fight, oh, you want to wrestle? Kyla, you want to wrestle? Okay, throw me. I'm going to wrestle you back. And the first takedown from Kyla Harrison Holly Holm reverses it, gets on top of her, and keeps wrestling her. Man, let her go. Let her go. Frame, keep her at a distance, pick and poke. She didn't do that. She wrestled with her. She lost her explosiveness. She got pinned. She got controlled. You, why would you wrestle with Har Harrison? Why? It makes no sense. It backfired. It's insane. I don't understand why she would do that. In round two, she got double leg. She got... Taken down again, like she, Harrison shoots in a double. But Harrison, that's your. She drained you in round one. She drained Holly Holm in round one. Really, 
I don't know. I, I think it was a horrible strategy. Harrison built like a tank. I wouldn't want to try to head kick her. That's from baby. No, you do. You do want to head kick her. That's what you want. You don't want to wrestle with her. But believe me, you head kick somebody, I don't care how muscular they are. You can put them out. Okay, Believe me. Kyla is literally out of lab. That's from Tyler. Tyler thinks she's out of a lab. Look. <laughs> Look how muscular her back is. It's insane. Now, when you look at female bodybuilders, you got different categories of female bodybuilders. There's some that are drug free and there's some that are with drugs, okay? Because you have drug free bodybuilding. Look at a picture. I'm going to Google this now. Look at a picture of drug free bodybuilding. And the one thing you got to know about drug free bodybuilding, you got to be drug free for one year. Sometimes it's five years. Okay. Now, I believe that a lot of women don't do the drugs. Why? Because they don't want to, they don't want the masculine traits. Okay. So I'm looking here like even the bodybuilding women don't have backs like that. It's insane. Like if you do, I, I know a lot of women do do steroids. Okay. I, I definitely, I can tell you that's certain because you can see that they have hair on their chin. Their jaws are square. Like you can tell this girl's on steroids. But a lot of these fitness women don't do steroids. Why? Because they don't want masculine traits, right? They want to be super, super fit, muscular, but not too, you know, they don't want their voice to change. Men don't care as much, right? Your voice gets deeper. And also, by the way, if you take steroids too long, too intensely, your voice can become very effeminate. There's a lot of dangers with taking steroids. I don't advocate it at all, but I'm just saying to get muscular like that, it's very, very difficult because you can see even the bodybuilding women are not that muscular. They're not that muscular. It's, it's it's an insane amount of muscle that she has on her. Joe Rogan told she is the female Vitor Belfort. That's from Francisco de Silva. She is built like a female Vitor Belfort. That's insane. It's an insane. Guys, I can tell you, that's an insane amount of muscle she has on her. It's just insane. It's Jalen Turner, not Jalil. Pardon me. Okay, my Arabic tongue goes to Jalil. Uh, forgive me, okay? My uh, pronunciation is really bad, I know. In Arabic, we say Jalil. So, pardon me, it's Jalen Turner. Zane says, I missed this super chat. Would you ever invite Demetrius Johnson on this channel? He has podcasts and has gone... On Rampage Jackson's podcast before. That's from Hassan. Yes, of course I would. I love Demetrius Johnson. Guys, quick little Demetrius Johnson story. Once upon a time, me and him were in, uh, we're doing a promo thing for UFC. I can't remember what it was. I have no idea what it was. Like It was like fight week and we were both together. And there was a Street Fighter arcade game. Now, he loves Street Fighter. He loves gaming. You guys all know that. <laughs> and I used to play Street Fighter when I was a kid. I was obsessed with the game Street Fighter. So me and him are like, let's play. Sure. I take Ryu. Who did he take? I can't remember who he took. Of course, my favorite character, Ryu. Let's just say I beat the gamer. He was shocked. He didn't think I could play any game. Like, I don't play games. You know, like I'm, I am I know he's a gamer. I'm not a gamer. But Street Fighter, I know. I used to play that as a kid. I used to play it like crazy, like as much as I can. I, anytime I found a quarter, I would save it because I'm going to go play Street Fighter. I would play... In a video store next to my house, I'd walk there and I'd spend hours just putting every quarter I have and I'd finish the game with one quarter. I could finish the whole game with one quarter. Anyways, <laughs> Demetrius Johnson's a very cool guy, really fun guy. So, you know, of course, we're trash talking, we're talking back and forth, we're having fun, obviously. And then, uh, I don't know, I seem like maybe a year later or something, and he's at a fight event. He's fighting. Like, he, you know, so I shook his hand and I was congratulating him and I met his wife and I was telling her, congratulations. And he mentioned the Street Fighter game. <laughs> he brought it up. He's like, you know, I always tell my wife, you beat me at Street Fighter. <laughs> I'm like, come on. He's, he's still bitter about the Street Fighter match. So, Demetrius, if you want a rematch, my friend, I'm here. I'll warm up these old thumbs and I'll give you a rematch. Salam, Coach Aspinal and P 
Pavlovich will fold Pereira. Aspinall is six foot five, two hundred and sixty five pounds. Boxing background with BJJ black belt. Aspinall also beats pa Pavlovich. Let's see, let's see, man. I, look, I agree, he's a dangerous guy, no doubt about it. But that left hook, my friend, that left hook. It's a touch of death. Did you see the Wei Li sub at the end of round one? That's some sickish Joey. Yes. <laughs> Guys, there was so many good fights. We can't even cover them all. It was an insane night, a night of fights. Wei Li versus Yan. At the end of round one, Wei Li puts on a full rear naked choke, let, releases Yan. Yan is out. You know when you go out, you're like, what, what just happened? She just woke up from a nap. And she finds herself at UFC 300. I'm sure, first of all, she went to the wrong corner. The referee had to grab her and guide her to her corner. She must have been like, what's going on? She must have been so confused. Guys, if you've never been choked out, you wake up kind of confused. Like nowadays when I get choked out and it happens once in a while, like it's happened to me quite a bit so that I know, I know that I'm choked out. Like I know. But sometimes it'll still get the better of you. Like you're like, where the hell am I? Could you imagine, could you imagine just waking up in your UFC 300? <laughs> she must have been... She must have had her mind blown. She's like, where am I? What's going on right now? <laughs> oh, it's UFC 300? What round is this? She probably had no, IQ, no idea what round it was, what was going on, who's she fighting. Like, it's such a weird feeling. Like, you're waking up from a deep sleep. You know, you're like, you're napping. You wake up. Imagine you're in, in, in your bed. You're sleeping. You wake up from, like, a really restful sleep. You wake up, you open your eyes, and poof, it's UFC 300. Poor girl. Honestly, it was wild. Now, I think... If I was the ref, I would have stopped the fight. Like, if you're out and I have to revive you, pick you up, and you're out. It's over. Anyways, it was still a crazy four more rounds to come. A wild fight. A back and forth seesaw battle. It was incredible. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, guys. A little bit. Of... I got the burps. Hold on. Coach, what do you think about Max versus Ilya? That's from King Salman. Guys, right now I'll pick Max. Right now I'll pick Max. I think Max is going to get that strap again. What is the best striking 101 instructional in your opinion? That's from Jake Sloan. Guys, check out A Man's Guide to Throwing a Punch. I promise you it's the best. It's how to punch. After that, after you've done A Man's Guide to Throwing a Punch, get... Professional kicking one, professional kicking two. Add your boxing to your kicks and your striking will be phenomenal, okay? I have two two videos on kicking, professional kicking one, professional kicking two. Those are world-class videos. Guys, Juji Club, you get world-class technique, world-class professional highest level. Nobody can give you the price I give you. Nobody. It's the best deal possible online and it's supremely Advanced information. Best way to build cardio. Okay, guys, let's uh, let's finish up three hundred. Okay, Diego Lopez, guys, so many great fights, man. We couldn't, we can't cover them all. There was so many great fights. Diego Lopez has a bright future. What's next for him? That's from sickish Joey. We forgot about Diego Lopez. He beat Yosef Sadiq. Big win for him. Round one, uppercut, uppercut, two uppercuts. Story of the night. He called out Mofsar. He called out... Uh, who else did he call out? He called out Mofsar. And then he called out... Oh, was it Ilya? Tapora. He wants Tapora. I think it's a little early for a title shot. I think he, needs to, he needs to win a few more fights. But I can't wait to see what's next for him. <laughs> Harrison's back video might do better than yours, coach. That's from AJ. I believe it. Let me tell you something. I don't know how you build a back like that. It's not human. That's not human, man. What are your thoughts on learning judo from JMJC? Uh, that's in Jason Morris Judo Club. Guys, Jason Morris, that's from Eduardo Cruz. Thank you for that question, Eduardo. Uh, Jason Morris, in my opinion, is the most inspiring judoka ever. Why? Because he, he won a silver medal in the Olympics, but he also was incredible at, in wrestling. He would use judo in wrestling. Guys, go to YouTube, type in Jason Morris Judo 
If you're ever in uh, his vicinity, check out his club. I've trained there. It's amazing. I've had him at TriStar giving seminars. The guy's a brilliant guy. Make sure, guys, to check out Jason Morris on YouTube. You will be inspired. His technique, I still use it to this day. Um, it's unique. It's special. And uh, what can I say, man? The guy's uh, just a, he's a legend. This is from Shiz. Bone Nickel fans, let's find out who is the best grappler slash wrestler. My boy Kamzat is keeping an eye on anyone who stands in his way. I will admit Bo is good, but Kamzat is also good, has iron chin and KO power. People like to forget. Let's go, baby. That's from Shiz, guys. Shiz, the top G of our chat room, is calling out Bone Nickel to fight Kamzat. Now, if I was in the Bone Nickel camp, I would wait a little bit. I would get Bone Nickel a couple more fights because right now I think Kamzat is... I have to agree with Shiz. Kamzat is too much. But Bo has so much potential. Coach, are there any fighters, past or present, that could take a Pereira or Mike Tyson left hook? That's from X XXCOD. Not reliably, you know. Those who had the great who has the greatest chin of all time? Yeah, I gotta think of that. You know, it's pretty uh you know, I'll tell you something, guys. <laughs> BJ Penn, once upon a time, had the like one of the best chins. You know what? Like in boxing, or we're talking about MMA, best chin of all time. Man. Okay, the greatest chin of all time. Khabib. Khabib. I'll tell you something about Khabib. I know people are telling me, oh, poor, you had him stunned. I think he just kind of stumbled. I think, like, yeah, maybe it's off balanced him a little bit, but. He he doesn't care. I'm telling you, Khabib. <laughs> I'm telling you, I've trained with the guy. <laughs> He's impervious to pain. Even Gaethje leg kicks. He thought it was ridiculous. People thought those were working. Like he, to him, it was nothing. McGregor's left hand hit him in round three. Nothing. Like literally nothing. <laughs> I can't explain it. <laughs> the man has. I I'm telling you, the man has no fear of getting hit. And he thinks people he thinks people who say he got hurt or what he thinks it's absurd. Like he thinks like, oh, what do you go? Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys think I got hurt? Because I didn't feel nothing, and I'm not like he. He was jogging, literally jogging in the octagon towards. Um. What's his name? I'm forgetting his name. Oh, I can't believe I'm forgetting his name. Ah, Edson Barboza. Forgive me, guys. Slip of the tongue here. Edson Barbosa is a heavy hitter when he throws. I mean, he throws his whole body in there. He's a heavy hitter. He, does he was just jogging towards him. like He's like, let's just trade, man. Let's go. I want to wrestle. I want to fight with you. Let's go throw your shots at me. I'm telling you guys, Khabib has zero fear of getting hit. Zero. Like zero. If you hit him flush on the chin to him, he's just going to like keep walking forward. He has no respect for anybody's power. No respect. How is Khabib so durable? Question mark. That's from King Salman. I think training from birth. He's just been training from birth. And either combat somebody. Or I don't know. I don't know what it is, man. He's so robust. He's blessed. He's blessed in so many ways. It's incredible. He's one. Of, he's the most robust human being I think I've ever seen. It's it's incredible. Even Yo Romero. Even Yo Romero has been hurt. You know, Rome, Yo Yo Romero. Let me look up his record. I think he's been knocked out. Yes, he has been knocked out. Who was it that knocked him out? It was a Brazilian fighter. Because Yo Romero is also a very robust guy. He's also a very hard guy to KO. Let me just see here real quick. Let me look at his stats real quick here. Yeah, he has one KO loss. That's right. That's right. He fought. Who was it that beat him with a KO? Rafael Calvacante. Lost punches. Round two, late in round two, I was in strike force. Robert Whitaker heard him in the, their fight. I mean, again, super robust guy, but still not as robust as Khabib. Coach, respectfully, how can you say it's 60 40 with Islam and Dustin? Question mark. Dustin made huge technical errors against. St. Denis, and he got ragdolled for the first round. Islam is levels above that. That's from Overlap 618. 
You're right. I agree. Like, uh, he jumped guillotine. I don't think a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea to jump guillotine on Islam Makachev. I hope he reconsiders his strategies. You're right. You know what? You're right. Uh, overlap. You made me remember the Saint Denis fight. I'm going to bump it up to 70 30. Okay, I'm going to bump it up. Thank you very much for that. You're actually very correct on that. That's why before I actually do an official breakdown, I go back and I rewatch their fights and I think about it. You know, Now I just did it kind of on the fly. You're right. If 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 <laughs> Justin Poirier tries that stuff on Islam Makachev, it ain't going to work. He's just going to get crushed. They're too advanced in grappling than he is. You don't try to sub a grappler. Like if you're a striker, don't try to sub the grappler. Don't play with fire because that's their world. You're going in their world. You know, you think you know your guillotines. Yeah, but they know the guillotine escapes. They've been doing it longer than you've been doing guillotine. So the guillot... Because what's better, guillotines or guillotine escapes? Well, it depends which one of you has the better jujitsu, the better grappling. If I'm doing guillotine escapes for 10 years and you've been doing guillotine chokes for five years, well, guess what? I'm probably going to escape your guillotine. It's a question of experience. Guys, don't forget, we are doing UFC 300. I'm doing a mix always of... Super chats and non-super chats. <clears throat> he got knocked out in Bellator? No. Yo Romero didn't get knocked out in Bellator. Let me see this. Hold on a second. Split decision to Phil Davis. Nemkov beat him in Bellator. I didn't see that fight. I have to go back and watch that fight. No, he didn't get knocked out in... No, he, he's only been knocked out once. He's never been knocked out in Bellator. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Coach, I love your podcast. I'm a professional ballroom dancer. My legs are strong but thick. What exercise can I do to make the upper legs thinner? That's from Adam. Adam, I don't usually recommend this, but if you want to slender your legs you got a diet and i recommend long runs now if you do long runs it lowers testosterone that's why i don't recommend it okay but if you do long runs you can get really really small you can get really really thin legs if that's what you need and i will tell you diet properly okay so reduce your calories by 15 percent. see what happens to your body don't lose more than half a pound to one pound a week okay if you do more than that it's really not healthy it's not a good idea so lose weight gently slowly and I would highly recommend long, long runs. It'll trim down your legs. You can get as skinny as you want, my friend. Okay, guys. I, Ilya, too. Please, we're still we're just talking about uh, UFC three hundred. Now, my stay coach. What should you do after you get concussed badly or knocked out? That's from the man. Um, go see a specialist, get your scans, go, you know, go talk to a specialist. I don't want to give advice on this, but definitely rest, you know, like, go talk to your specialists. And like, if you're talking about the Gaethje knockout, I would tell him, take time off. We're going to rebuild slowly. We're going to talk to, you know, the best concussion guy we can find. And we're going to take his advice. And that's really what you should do. Find the best concussion guy or the best head specialist you can find. Um, okay, Ilya, I'm going to do your question, but guys, please, only questions on 300 from now on. Salam, coach, what do you expect from complete beginners in martial arts who started late and later in life, mid-20s? What is the attitude you want to see and what type of progression you hope to achieve? That's from Ilya. You can go really far, okay? But I will tell you, master the basics. That's why I made a whole series about advanced basics. Get really, really good at the basics because... There are trends in jiu-jitsu. If you hop on the trend, six months from now, that trend, you know, we figured out why it doesn't work or we found a really good counter, that goes by the wayside. The basic maneuvers are going to be there 10 years from now, 20 years from now. They've been there since the beginning. They work at the highest level and at every level. They work from white belt to black belt. That's what we call them the basics, okay? They're the core moves. People spend too much time trying to figure out, like, the next trend, like, to, trying to, like, they see a cool YouTube move. Sometimes, you know, I'm rolling with my students and I'm beating them up and I'm like, oh, that's YouTube jiu-jitsu. You know, they try something weird on me and I just kind of crush it. And I'm like, oh, and I just poke fun at them because I know they learned it on YouTube. And I'm just, and I think I'm a YouTuber and I put videos on YouTube. Yes, but there's a lot of like weird characters on YouTube. You know, there's a lot of good, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of great stuff on YouTube. Definitely a lot of brilliant, I'm not trying to say everybody out there is no good. There's a lot of good. But there's also a lot of, you know, guys who are, you know, I don't know who they got. I don't know how, how how advanced they are. 
And I could tell when my student's kind of doing something weird because I never showed him that, you know, and he's kind of doing this like this weird technique and it's like, doesn't make any sense and you just kind of crush it. Like, it's like, I just make fun of them. I just like, oh, YouTuber, oh, we got a YouTuber here. And I'll just be like, you know, just mowing through his guard or whatever it be. I know this isn't really 300 related, related, but has the best chance to beat Islam in the lightweight division. Who has the best chance? Is that what you're asking? But who has the best chance to beat Islam in the lightweight division? If no one, does Leon beat him if he moves up? That's from Andrew. I would tell you, um, Takurian has the best chance right now, and I still don't think he can do it. I think Islam should stay put, defend the title three, four, five times, and then move up to fight Walter Wade. But he should cement himself as at least the second greatest lightweight of all time because Khabib is number one. And I don't think he ever surpassed Khabib. I don't think he wants to surpass Khabib. But he should cement himself as the second best lightweight of all time. How can you tell if your BJJ coach is legit? What do you look for in a BJJ coach? That's some Shafiq. Okay, guys, I guess uh, we're going to move on from 300. I'm going to open it up to ask me anything because, you know, everybody's asking me stuff that's not related to 300. So if that's what it is, let's do it. We've talked about 300 for, a, for one hour and 16 minutes. I think that's quite fair. Let's move it on to an Ask Me Anything. No holds barred, guys. Feel free to ask absolutely anything. We have Shafiq here asking, how can you tell if a BJJ coach is legit? What do you look for in a BJJ coach? Well, I'll tell you, he produces you know, high-caliber athletes, and uh, when you roll with him, he knows what he's doing. Like He's not using force. I've trained with black belts that I don't think they're legit. Why? Because they're effective. You, know, you have to differentiate between being effective and, and technical. Because here's the thing. Imagine there's a lot of instructors out there. They take a lot of steroids and even a lot of competitors like and these guys I've trained with so many of these guys. I'm telling you, they don't understand technique. The reason why they don't understand technique is because they're so strong. They're doing it wrong, but for them, they're getting the results. So you have being effective and being technical. Those are two different things. For sure, if you're a blue belt and I jam you up with a bunch of steroids, you're going to become a purple belt and not long. Not technically a purple belt, but because of your added strength, now you can compete with the purple belts. I used to have a black belt instructor. Like, I used to work with him every so often, and he was on a lot of steroids. And he used to tell me, get on steroids. And I was like, I don't want, I don't want to get on steroids. And he, when we would roll, he would have a hard time with us. And he was on steroids, and we weren't. And I was like a purple belt at the time. And I would always tell, I was always new knew myself like I would I didn't want to copy his jiu-jitsu why because it doesn't make sense you you're using steroids and you're not getting the results on top of it you're using steroids imagine you didn't have the steroids you'd be a blue belt now you we'd be crushing you like you know it's just they rely on it and they think the solution is always more squeezing more power it's just a really black, like when you're the weaker guy when you go in and you're thinking hey this guy's stronger than me Squeezing is the last thing on your mind. You're like, squeezing is, 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 is not the answer. More torque is not the answer. But when you go in there, like, in your, your mindset is like, oh, I took so much steroids, I feel stronger. I'm lifting weights and I feel stronger. So it makes sense you want to, like, force your way into a sub or force your way to the back. You want to force. Why? Because you feel strong and you feel like you're stronger than the other guy. And that's your advantage. And you want to exercise that advantage. That's what you're confident in. But that takes away from thinking about what's the better solution. What's the way I can avoid the guy's strength and subdue him using an angle or leverage, you know, using some kind of mechanical mechanical advantage. And you got to be thinking in that matter because that's what jiu-jitsu is, doing more with less. Jiu-jitsu is about efficiency. But these guys are not thinking on that level. They're just thinking about, like, I got to get stronger. How, how could I apply force on this man's body but they have a limited level of like thinking about it you know they're just going to kind of like do what feels right so i feel like those instructors i mean i find it's ridiculous because it flies in the face of jiu-jitsu now is it effective yes it's effective now some of them can become world champion with that method they're technical yes they're not that technical but because they're on steroids they can surpass the more technical guys yes absolutely now you have to have a balance of technique and steroids but also, you can't forget, even the most technical guys are on, on juice. Even the most, that's the crazy thing about the sport of jiu-jitsu. There are very few natural guys. There are very few. The, in the elite level, because they don't test, right? 
they don't test. And I'm telling you, even the guys with the best technique, you have all tiers. Okay, you guys, you got guys with the best technique and they're on steroids. You got guys with this medium level of technique and they're on steroids. And you got the guys who are at the bottom of the barrel in technique, and they're on steroids. So it's hard. Like, imagine you're a regular Joe. You want to learn jiu-jitsu, and you got to learn jiu-jitsu from this guy who's a, got the testosterone of a horse. You know, it's like it doesn't make sense. <laughs> the stuff he does won't work for you. It just won't work. Coach, what do you think about old school abstaining from sex before fights? Question mark. Do you think it's up? It upgrades performance? Question mark. That's from Tyler. Look, after you have sex, your testosterone dips by very little. But by the next sleep cycle, generally, it'll be even higher. There's tests on this. Okay, so it's not the sex per se that's gonna fatigue you. It's the going out all night, <laughs> you know, it's the, it's the, the drama that comes with the, you know, trying to find, like, if you have a, I mean, if you, the night before the fight, I personally, I wouldn't do it because like, I wouldn't want my mind there. Like I, I'd be focused on the flight. Like I just, you know, and there is an argument to be made on the other side. If you say, look, the animal kingdom, they always fight first before they have sex. Because you have to fight for sex, right? So when you get the sex, is there a motivational issue? So hormonally, we know it doesn't change anything because they've tested people, right? They they make people they test your testosterone. You have sex. They test your testosterone immediately after. It's a little bit lower. One sleep cycle, you go to bed for eight hours. You wake up, your testosterone slightly higher because it's the morning. You're back to normal levels. Sex won't lower your testosterone significantly enough if you do it the night before a fight. It won't. Now, if you stay up all night having sex, well, now you didn't sleep your eight hours, you know, like there are things that can go wrong, okay? <laughs> you know, like uh, don't tell me, hey, coach, I, I stayed up having sex till five in the morning. You told me it wouldn't it wouldn't fatigue me and I was exhausted during my fight. Well, like, I didn't tell you to stay up till five in the morning. It's not the act, the act of sex is what I'm trying to say. However, psychologically, is there an effect? Like if you go in your fight and you're like, I don't know, you have your, your the, the primal side of your brain is like, hey, I think if we win this, we get sex. And he's going to give you an extra, that primal side, that, that reptilian braid of yours, I think maybe he's going to give you more energy. But if your reptilian side is fed, and it's not, I, again, this is just a wild, cockamamie, crazy, take it for a grain of salt theory. But if you ever fought before, you know, before fights, people get, par they want every possible advantage. And if that's a, even maybe a hypothesis, Let's accept it. You know, like, believe me, we've done crazy things before fights because we thought maybe it would give us an edge. You know, like, from the smallest, weirdest thing to the... Um, anyways, even... I will tell you, most fighters, the night before a fight, they're not in the mood for sex. They're not in the mood for sex. Like, they're just, like, so stressed out about their fight or focused on their fight, you know. They did a weight cut. Also, don't forget, you're rehydrating. You're exhausted. You wake up at, like, 5 in the morning, cut weight. You cut weight the night before. You wake up again really early. After the weigh you're exhausted. You want to take a nap. You want to eat. You want to drink. You go to dinner. You want to eat. Oh, your f belly's full. Your stomach's expanding. You know, it was, it was shrunken. You're not in the mood for that stuff. You know, you're just going to go to bed. So there's that too. Okay, guys, we have 1,339 votes. 50% say Gaethje's. Holloway versus Gaethje is the greatest knockout of all time. 30% say Aldo versus McGregor. 4% say Holly Holm versus Rousey, which I'm shocked that you guys, you guys don't remember the hype behind that fight. I'm telling you, Holly Holm was such an underdog. And 16% say Masvidal versus Askren. I'm shocked that nobody, not more people are choosing the Holly Holm knockout. Assalamu alaikum, coach. Jazakallah khair for guiding me in Islam as a Chinese revert with your wonderful knowledge and wisdom. Inshallah, I can visit you and give you gifts and treat you out for food. That's from Herman. Herman, you're a gentleman and a scholar. And salamu alaikum. Welcome uh, to Islam. And yes, definitely, my brother. Inshallah, you come to Montreal. We'll definitely have a bite to eat. I would love to hear your story, inshallah. This is from Kevin Hess. Kevin says, Hi, Coach. I know you already spoke extensively about this in your Adesanya Konanir 
pre-fight analysis but do you have any more relationship advice for us <laughs> question mark you're gonna have to ask a, ex, ex, you're gonna have to ask a specific question but i'll just tell you something what can i say i mean <laughs> i've noticed the trend in, in the west you know i always talk about the west guys i live in the west i'm a westerner of course my parents hail from the middle east I'm have a Middle Eastern culture. I'm I marry I married the two, the West and the East. And there's good and bad on both sides. And you have to balance them. There's good on both <laughs> there's good and bad in both cultures. And I'm I, and I try to like pass down the good to my kids and I try to protect them from the bad. Like I try to warn them, don't do the bad. And I've noticed in the West, women are so powerful. It's insane. That it kills the dynamic. Like, for instance, look at Will Smith. Will Smith, man. Look at this. Look at this guy. Movie star, rap star, sitcom star, uh, millionaire, multi, multi millionaire. Like, uh, it's just like the guy has every. From youth, from youth, from a young age, he's incredibly successful every 10 years he has some kind of big project and he's famous on like he, the guy is so famous still his women humiliates him emasculates him destroys him like you could tell like i, I remember when he slapped uh chris rock and i don't know anything about his life i don't know anything about his personal life nothing and then they're talking about, you know, he slapped him because, you know, his wife was sleeping around with another guy. They were on a break. I don't know. I don't want to get into the drama, but you guys know all the story. It just was everywhere. You couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't go on the internet and not see Will Smith, Will Smith, Will Smith, Will Smith. the whole story behind Will Smith. What the hell does he have? To, like, what the hell is this man doing? Like, I don't think Will Smith has a friend in the world. Like, <laughs> what kind of person? His woman then releases a video of her filming him. She's think about this. She's filming Will Smith, telling him, "Look, look what I have to deal with." And he was giving her drama, like, "Hey," he was telling her, "Don't film me, don't film me." And you could tell, of course, they were beefing. That's his woman. They're beefing, and she decides to videotape him and post it. She decides to videotape her man and post it. That tells me he has no. His woman has zero respect for him. I find that women in the West have no respect for men. Like, it's insane. Because I've traveled the world. Asian women, they respect their man. African women, they respect their man. Arabic women, they respect their man. Indian women, they respect their man. Like, it's Russian women, they respect their man. Like, the man's home, but wait, wait. The man's here. Like, it's just... Guys, go to Latin America. And I know there's exceptions. Like, I'm not crazy. But you go to Latin America, they respect their man. Like, the man is the man. He's the household. And <clears throat> I would say even in the U.S. it still exists. But the New York, California type new wave of thinking, <clears throat> it's insane to me <laughs> how little respect men get. It's just insane. And you know what? Like, I'm a philosopher, right? So I, I got to tell you guys these things. I can't avoid these things. I cannot avoid these things. I have to tell you things you don't like. Because I know every time we talk about women, somebody gets pissed. Somebody writes me a letter. Somebody makes a post about me. Somebody's going to clip this and write it. And I don't care when they do that because I think to me, it exposes them more than me because I'm not ashamed of saying this at all. I have no shame in this at all. Now, don't forget, people historically don't like philosophers because, you know, Socrates, arguably the greatest philosopher of all time. He was charged with corrupting the youth. I mean, they killed him. The Greeks killed him. Now today they praise him. Yes, of course, the Greeks always say, look, Socrates, Socrates, Socrates. He was Greek. He was one of us. He was our, he was our great, uh, one of our great uh, thinkers. Yes, but the Greeks at the time in Athens, in ancient Greece, they killed the man. They didn't like him. Nobody liked Socrates at the time. Only the, the rebel youth lo loved Socrates. <laughs> you see in the ancient world the women respected men why did they respect men let me tell you this women respected men because 
they needed protection. A woman's life was very difficult in the ancient world. Why? Because if she'd walk from one place to another, she can get assaulted, kidnapped, murdered, abused in every which way. The only reason she wouldn't is if she had a man with her or she was known. She was known like, oh, that's so-and-so's wife. Don't touch her. Don't look at her. Don't disrespect her. What happens if you touch her? That family is going to come and kill you. Like so-and-so's crew is going to come and destroy you. It was all about who you are, status. Now, I'm not talking about ancient Greece because ancient Greece had more laws. I'm talking about the ancient world. The majority of the world was might is right. If you were known, nobody would touch your women. If you were not known, you were fair game. Nobody cared about you. Women for a long, long time always need the protection of men. And of course, in our modern day, they have the protection of men. If you're violent with your woman, all she has to do is call 911. She pushes those three buttons, my friend. Men in, men in uniforms are going to come and put you in bracelets. And it's a good thing, of course. It's a good thing. You shouldn't be beating your woman. You shouldn't be abusing your woman. So now women have this newfound power. It makes man and woman equal in terms of physical power because of course you can overpower her but she has those three little buttons she can push and when she pushes those three little buttons my friend it's worse whatever you do to her it's going to be worse for you it's going to be worse for you you can beat her up yeah sure you could put the pain on her for 30 40 minutes but you're going to be in behind bars for a long time so she can greatly avenge herself which is a good thing of course but it's changed the social dynamic So much so that I swear to you guys all, I just saw a video about this. Like I saw a Karen video where a guy punches a woman. And goodness gracious, guys, I would tell you, never punch a woman. I don't care what she does. This woman, I'm sure you guys saw it. It's a, it's going viral now. She uh, parks near a fire hydrant. And the guy's like, hey, you can't park there. And the woman's like, I am EMT. I'm EMT. You know, like she's just being a Karen. She's just totally being a Karen. I'm EMT. I save lives. What do you do? You film people and you put it on your followers and she's just dissing the guy. Then she gets in her car. She drives a few feet, gets back out, starts dissing the guy again. She runs up to the guy and you can tell she hits him. Boom. And I was like, hey, what did you? The guy is like holding the camera. He's like, hey, don't you dare do that again. And he didn't, he didn't hit her yet. He didn't hit her. He didn't hit her. He's just like telling her off, telling her, you know, don't you dare do that again. The woman comes back up and spits in his face. You don't see this on the video, but he lays her out. Because then after that, you see the aftermath and she's laid out. Like on the concrete, not on the asphalt, I should say. It looked like the guy, well, the guy was big. The guy was a big guy, much bigger than her. She was like, I got to tell you, she looked like she was 40-something. Like she was not a young, you know, she, thought, she can't take. It was horrible. Like you should never, if, if I was the, that guy, I wouldn't hit her. I would not hit her. Like even if she spit in my face, I would have maybe like apprehended her because she's crazy and I would have called the cops on her and filed a report against her but I would have apprehended her nicely I think hitting her is very cowardly like you can't just grab her and call 911 like this woman's psychotic she needs to be reported he flattens her man he flattens her now you could see that all the men around started like telling him off hey man you hit her you shouldn't have done that nobody said a word when she was cursing him like she was cursing him for a long time she was insulting him insulting him threatening him Nobody said anything. There was a street full of people. Nobody said a word. When a woman's attacking or hitting a guy, nobody says a word. And it's kind of almost funny. Like people think it's funny when a woman hits a man. It's almost kind of like comical. But if a man hits a woman, it's a massive taboo. And I agree with it because men are more powerful, we're more robust, we're far more dangerous. And 99% of assaults is always men on women, like sexual assault. It's always men on women. It's never women on a man. That never happens. Literally, that never happens. I remember one. I made this statement one time. I made a statement here on podcast, and I said that all sexual abuse is a hundred percent men all the time, the aggressors. And somebody said, "No, it's not true." And we found one case, like literally one out of the infinite sexual assault cases. There's one case, and it's true. It's documented that a soccer team, a female soccer team, the female soccer coaches sexually abused the female players. If we remove that one exception, I was right. Okay, so I'm officially wrong to say that 100%. It's really 
99.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
if the woman attacks you, you should be able to hit her back because you would do that to a man. I have to disagree with you, Mike. I have to disagree with you. Now, call me sexist, okay? Call me sexist, but I don't think you should hit a woman because you could easily just grab her, subdue her, call the cops, file a report. She should get a fine. She should have a record because if she does it again, she should do the jail time. Like later on, you know, if she keeps repeat offense, that's why I would subdue her and like call the cops on her because maybe she's doing that all the time and nobody's reporting her and she's just, you know, going around acting crazy. But punching her, laying her out, guys, I, I wouldn't even play the video if I could right now. It's just so, it's horrible, man. He laid her out like bad, man. He knocked her out. She might be like a broken jaw. Bro it's just insane. Why hit a woman? Why? What does it bring you? Are you scared of her? Like, do you have to defend yourself? Do you feel any fear to your life? No. The answer is no. The guy was a big, strong guy. She was older than him. Like, for goodness sakes, man, what are we doing here? We're Don't get me wrong. I understand if a man slaps you, if a man spits on you. And you lay him out. You won't get the same reaction from me. I'm going to be like, yeah, you laid him out. He shouldn't have touched you. The reason why I would tell you is because a man can actually hurt you. If you don't if you don't defend yourself, he might come back and keep hitting you. He might come back and strangle you. He might. There's a line to be drawn. But a woman is not going to be able. Not in this instance. This particular instance, she was much smaller than him. There was no immediate danger. There was just annoyance. She might spit at you. She might hit you. And you might, and he showed his face. He had the barely, he did barely had a mark. Like he barely had a, his cheek was a little bit tiny. A little tiny hair, a little tiny redness. What can she do to you? Literally nothing really. She, she kept punching him. It wouldn't have done anything to him. The woman can't generate any power. This particular woman is not powerful. I know there are exceptions. I know there's women out there who can really make, do damage. I get it. But this was not the case. She was an older woman. She was in her forties. You could tell she was just venting. She's being a, a Karen. Look, if the guy walked up to her car and broke her window or took her keys and chucked them down the street or something to get, you know, to annoy her back, I wouldn't have said anything. I would say, look, she slapped him. She spit on him. He broke. I would maybe turn off her car and break the key inside her ignition. That could piss her off. That could teach her a lesson. Do something like that. You won't get a word from me. I wouldn't say anything. Like if the guy went up to her car because she was there with her car. If he stepped, like if he broke her window, if he, I don't know, f popped her tires, if he slashed her tires, I wouldn't say anything. I would say, look, she deserved it. She's being a, you know, that's insane for her to spit on him. You don't punch people. You don't slap people in the street. That's insane. You know, so I would say, look, you got his revenge. You taught her a lesson. But he didn't, man. He flattened her. Like I'm telling you, she's out unconscious in the street. That's insane. First of all, he could have killed her manslaughter a punch like that she lands on the cement boom cracks her head open she's a 40 plus old woman like she i think she could have been like 45 even like you can kill her coach i don't do surgery how do i overcome a deviated septum to increase cardio so i can get back into kickboxing competition that's from zane zane i'm, I'm i don't know much about deviated symptoms uh, uh septums I would, I would have to do some research and talk to an expert. So I, unfortunately, I really, I don't know much about that. Coach, have you ever considered streaming at other times? It's 4.454 a.m. UK time. <laughs> Love your work. I do cardio 10K plus 12 rounds, bags plus weights, overkill, question marks. I think 10K is too much to run. 5K is the maximum you should run. 5K. Guys, get strong and stable running. I talk all about running. 10K is way too much. 5K is like, 10K is once in a while. Don't do it regularly. You're going to lose muscle. You're going to lose, especially if you're doing 10Ks in kickboxing. Not a good idea, okay? Make it shorter. 100-meter sprints, shuttle running, 400-meter sprints. Cycle your running. Get a better running. Your cardio will be better. Your cardio, your explosiveness, your performance will be better. You don't need 10K. That's just that's just too much. You're going to ruin your hips. You, you know, as you get older, you're going to need knee replacement, hip replacement, be strong and stable for life. There's no need for long, long distance running. You're going to destroy your hips. I used to have this debate with one of my old coaches. He used to be all about long runs. And let me tell you something. He got two hip replacements. Today, we talk about it. I'm still wrestling every day. I'm boxing every day. I'm training every day. And him, he has two hip replacements. He can't do it. Long distance running is a bad, bad uh, idea. Okay, I highly, highly recommend short distance running. You'll stay young for life. Why is Dustin so adamant on jumping the ghillie 
versus Islam. That's from Andrew. I don't know that he is, but if he does, it's not going to work. Like, unlikely to work. Very, very unlikely. So I really hope he, for him, for his sake, I mean, he did it against St. Denis and I, it didn't work. So imagine on Islam. Thoughts? Guys, we're going to be ending this soon, so please, no more super chats. I got to get to bed. Practice tomorrow. Coach, talk your shit. All facts. That's from Rainbow. <laughs> it is facts, guys. It is facts. Man, you know what You know what the West needs? It needs all men to start standing up. Start standing up for yourselves because you guys are getting bullied by your women. It's really insane. I know, like, I have friends that are Quebecois. You know, they're not Arabic culture and... When they come to my house, you know, they come as couples. You know, we have all these Quebecois couples. They love coming to my house. They love it. And they tell me, oh, like, we're, we're, we love coming to your house. Well, I'm like, why? Why do you love coming to my house? Oh, because, like, like you don't get bullied. What do you mean I don't get bullied? Oh, you know, you're you so lucky. I mean, what do you mean? Like, oh, because the women in my family, like, they respect the man. It's like they, they even see it. They come to my house. It blows their mind. It's like. Wow, your your wife is gonna offer you this, offer you that. She speaks to you so nicely. Yeah, does your wife do that? Oh no, like they're married to Karen. Some of them, it blows their mind. I'm like, no, well, <laughs> I don't know what to say, man. I find it funny, but it's a cultural thing. It's really a cultural thing. It's killed the beauty of life for, for some people. I would think, like, what's the point of being married? I wouldn't want to be married if I had to be married to a girl like that. I don't want to be married. I really don't want to be married. But here's the thing: my wife is Quebecois. She's a, she's born here. But, you know, we taught her our way of life. And if she doesn't accept that way of life, she can't be in our life. You know, like that's the attitude men have to have. Like the first thing men have to do, the first thing men have to do in the West is stop following women online that are half naked. It shows incredible weakness. Like, oh, the girl's in a bikini. I'm going to follow her. Oh, this girl's showing her booty. I'm going to follow her. Oh, this girl, she's got really pretty eyes and she's really sexy and she's showing her body. I'm going to follow her. So what do you think women do? They're like, oh, this girl, she put her provocative top on. She got more followers. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to make up, put up a push-up bra. I'm going to choke myself with my own breast and I'm going to get more followers. And it worked. Okay, let me show even more of my body. And it becomes a what we call a race to the bottom. All your women now are trying to be as sexy and as like provocative, as incredibly... Uh, sexually aggressive as they can be and that's a bad thing for you that's a very bad thing now imagine the opposite imagine a girl she dresses provocatively and everybody's like oh you know what we're not going to follow her we're going to kind of give her the cold shoulder it's kind of embarrassing we're embarrassed to be seen with her what's she going to do well she's going to dress up she's going to change her way and she's going to start respecting herself she's going to respect her community Men here show so much weakness. You don't understand. Women think you're weak. If you f if they show you their body just a little bit and you go bananas, they think you're weak. Why? Because they think, look, this guy he can't see. He doesn't have access to this. If he had access to this, I'd just be another girl. He'd he'd be cooler. But the fact that he's so hungry that he wants it so badly, it means that he's hungry for it. Is he hungry for it because he doesn't have it? The hungrier you are, the less resources you, you have, you must have. The less access to this you must have. This whole uh, uh, internet uh, only fans thing is insanity. I was just watching this interview. Oh my God, man. I'm telling you, I cringed. I cringed so hard. It was about the, the guy, Michael Knowles. He's famous and he was talking to this girl. She wears a cross and she does pornography. And it's got millions of views. And it's just this girl. She's like this Asian girl, very pretty girl. And she says, oh, she doesn't think, you know, God gave her this. And doing pornography is good because God's blessing her. And this guy's a Christian guy. He's trying to make her understand that, no, you don't understand. You can't say you're Christian and pornography is good. Because the Bible says pornography is bad. Okay, not directly, not explicitly. But believe me, it's not a crazy... It's not a crazy concoction. No, believe me. Way, things are way worse than that. And No, sorry. There are many sins, and pornography is like unheard of. You know, in in the Bible, if you do pornography, they would stone you. Okay, let's put it to you that way. <laughs> okay, put it to you that way. Like, it's the wor one of the worst things you can do. And this girl's like, oh no, I don't think so. I feel good. I'm not hurting anybody. 
I'm not hurting anybody. That's liberalism. That's not Christianity. She's trying to say, look, I'm a Christian and I do porn and I wear my cross. She wears her cross when she's doing her OnlyFans. And she confuses that. <laughs> what world are we living in? Where now Christianity, it's okay. Not, not Christian. Obviously, Christians don't think this. Just, But this is the new generation of Christian thinkers. Or... or, or it's a small percentage, yes. It might be just a handful of girls. I don't know. But it's scary that that even exists. Like, is that going to grow and multiply? Is that going to be like the future? That's the question. Of course, Christians don't do that. You know, you go to church, people are going to tell you, you know, porn is bad. Uh, wearing your cross, doing porn is unheard of. Of course, you know. But is that a glimpse into the future? Are we devolving so badly that these young kids are not even ashamed of doing porn? To them, no, me doing OnlyFans, doing pornography is a blessing. It's the way God shows he loves me. He gave me this. And I'm not hurting anybody. This is good. And she even said the word. She even said, I don't think prostitutes do anything wrong. I don't think it's bad. I'm not going to get into a history of prostitution. <laughs> but believe me when I tell you, <laughs> prostitution is an ill to society. It's an ill. The girl has doesn't have two brain cells to rub together. She doesn't have two brain cells to rub together. But because guys out there are sending her money, you made her so powerful. Guys like you, not guys like me. Guys like me would never put one penny on her. I wouldn't spend one penny on her OnlyFans if she paid me to see, look watch her OnlyFans. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. If she sent me an email, hey, I'll give you $10,000. Can you just go through my portfolio on OnlyFans and tell me what you think? I wouldn't take her money and I wouldn't open her OnlyFans. Because to me, she's not worth for me to look at. When men start thinking like that, women start standing upright. Women start saying like, wait a second. All the men think we're cheap. All the men think we're undesirable. We're not going to behave this way. The only reason she's literally on YouTube telling everybody that prostitution is not bad, pornography is not bad, and I'll even wear this cross while I'm doing it. She's telling you men, she's telling all of society, you guys are giving me all, you, you guys are rewarding me for this behavior. You guys are so powerless. I control. Look how many minions I have. Look how many men will send me money. This is my army. They back me up and I'm so powerful. I have so much resources that I'll defy everyone and even your religion. You know, America is supposed to be a Christian country. It was founded by Christian Christians. She will... Look how powerful the woman became. She is so powerful. She's going to spit on the state religion. She's going to humiliate the state religion. She's going to say, look, I'm going to take your state religion. I'm going to wear it around my neck. I'm going to wear that symbol around my neck. And I'm going to shoot pornography. She is completely emasculating the patriarchy. That's the state religion. <laughs> you do that. I know. I, I get it. America has like this freedom thing. I get it. I get it. I get it. And other places in the world, they don't have it. And I understand there's a lot of good. But there's a lot of like humiliation. Like this, I find this humiliating. I find this humiliating. This girl, she's something in society. Like, is that who we want in, as like a role model for our children in society? Is this who you want? Like, I think you guys are going to change your mind once you have little girls. Once you have a little daughter. You were like, I don't want my daughter like this. I don't want her being abused, showing her body. It's humiliating to the family. It's humiliating. And do you want your future wife to be influenced by women like this? Like, imagine you, your wife grew up with friends like this. Well, maybe your wife's not going to be so loyal and she's not going to be such a great wife. You know, she has this kind of, this kind of influence in her mind. To me, I think it's complete insanity and it has to do with men being groomed from a young age to be stepped on by women. From a young age, they groom you to be stepped on by women, to be abused like this psychologically. What psychological abuse this is? Men have to let their girlfriends basically emasculate them. Like Will Smith, in my opinion, he's the poorest guy ever. He's one of the poorest men I've ever seen. He's got millions of dollars, but he doesn't have the respect of his wife. And why can't he leave her? In my opinion, something's wrong with his head. He can't leave his woman after she slept with her son's best friend. They're supposed to be like their kid or something like that or I don't know what. 
to me, I find it to be complete insanity. Okay, guys, no more super chats. Thoughts on pornography, no fap, masturbation addict. That's from Khalistania. Short, short answer because I got to keep this short. You got to stay away from that. That's the kind of stuff that makes you... It, it, there's so many bad things to you. One, it makes the bad women too powerful in society. You should reward good behavior. And two, it kills your uh, launch sequence. It desensitizes you. When you watch too much pornography or you see, you're too exposed to sex all the time, it's not an, aff an affront on your freedom. You shouldn't take it that way. You should take it as it's an affront on my mechanics. Okay, let me give you a for instance. Okay, I'm, I'm going to take my time here and, uh, and try to explain this correctly. In some cultures, it's normal for men and women in public areas to be naked together. It's very normal, okay? Go to Europe, go to Germany, you go to the spa, it's men and women, they're all naked, all ages, all sizes, all walks of life, they're all together. You grew up from a young age seeing the opposite sex, naked, 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 naked. For you, a naked woman is nothing. A naked woman is, doesn't fire a, a launch sequence in your system. Take another culture where they don't see naked women until they get married. Okay, we're trying to make do a thought experiment here. Okay, we're not trying to say w which one is good, which one is bad. I want you guys to think, just think, and you decide. The other culture, they don't see a naked woman till they're married. Let's say, now when they see a naked woman, it's gonna the the, the launch sequence is gonna go. It's gonna go hyper, hyper. He's gonna feel a rush of desire. Okay, now. The other culture where they see naked women all the time, yes, they'll see a, they'll have a rush of desire, but over time it'll die out because it's overly sensitized. You know, if I give you, if I feed you all the time and I, and I, and I feed you like, a, like I'm farming a pig, food doesn't taste so sweet. But if I make you fast for 24 hours and then I give you a meal, oh, even the simplest food is so delicious. It's so, the more, the more desire you have, the more, pleasurable the release the more high the reward okay so men who are constantly bombarding themselves with pornography what happens when they get into bed with a woman it's like there's no launch sequence there's no launch sequence the soldier is not saluting he's not getting up why you've desensitized yourself you've desensitized yourself you've desensitized yourself you've gotten to your psyche is overwhelmed now if what's exciting to you is Watching a woman and clicking three seconds later on another one, and then three seconds later on another, and another, and another, and just that's the only thing that stimulates me. I need so much visual stimuli. I need so it has to be so extreme because I can't abstain. Now, if you abstain for a year, a month, if you abstain, the battery will recharge. The battery will recharge. You know that's a big thing about Ramadan. We just finished Ramadan, and you know it's recommended you don't even sleep with your woman, your wife. You re-energize the battery so the launch sequence will, will happen again and again and it will be desirable again. But people, most people, I think, they can't imagine depriving themselves. They can't imagine it. To them, it's insane to deprive yourself. You know, I, I have this discussion with my wife every so often. You know, my wife, you know, sometimes I, I, I put myself through unnecessary suffering and she always tells me, why would you want to suffer? Why would you want to do it that way? Why would you want pain? And... Every time I find a good example, I, I, sh I show her. Look, see that? See, that's an example why somebody should go through pain. Like, for instance, recently, what was it? Recently, I, 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 I gave her a great example of pain, of pain. Somebody, a friend of ours had to go through something, and it was so, like, she was so, she was so anxious about it. But it was really, like, a, 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 a very normal social situation. But for this person, a friend of ours... She was super anxious about it. And I said, look, that's the whole point. She's so avert she's always averting pain in every which way. So now she painted herself in a corner. That even a not not a very normal social interaction now has become too it's become too difficult for her to face. However, if you expose yourself regularly to challenges, you grow as a human being. Then that social situation is nothing to you. It's nothing. To you, it's just a normal day in the park think about it this way 
Let's say you have a problem and it's a 6 out of 10. The problem is a 6 out of 10. If your problem solving skills is a 4 out of 10, that's a big problem. If your problem solving skills is a 9 out of 10 and the problem you're facing is a 6 out of 10, that's nothing to you. You don't even sweat. You can resolve that problem. When you put yourself through challenges, you're developing your ability to solve more and more complex problems, more and more challenges. The better problem solver you are, the less these problems scare you. The more you develop your skills, the less these challenges phase you. And that happens in every facet of your life. Pornography, masturbation addiction, all these things, they kill your launch sequence. Now, I, I got to tell you something. Most Muslims think, I know in Christianity, there's a big taboo on masturbation, like a huge. In Islam, it's makru, it's, which meaning not recommended. It's not forbidden. It's not recommended, but uh, sorry, it's not strictly forbidden. It's not halal either. It's not permitted, but it's makru. It's like, it's a lesser of two evils. Like cause men, they're going to have to release some energy at one point. Like there's a balance is what I'm trying to say. Okay. There's a balance. You don't want to be numb and you don't want to be out of control either. Right. There's a right balance. Now some cultures, I think go too much to either side. And in our culture, I think we're too much on the desensitization phase. We're constantly being bombarded by sexual imagery that it, for us seeing a half-naked woman is nothing. It's nothing. It's not even a stimulus. She's got to put on... A, <laughs> she, just, we need something way more aggressive for us to get uh, excited about it. Okay, guys, please, no more super chats. I'm going to wrap this up very, very shortly. Ending the poll. We have a, somebody with a first BJJ match. Ah, let me see if I can... find it here one second oh 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 hold on one second let's see if it'll open up somebody sent me their first bjj match for me to watch which one are you shoots a double <laughs> i wish i could put this up hold on let me see if i can put this up hold on hold on hold on let me see if i can get this on the screen hold on a second gentlemen i'm going to Push these buttons here. I'm gonna push these buttons and see if I can make the magic happen. I don't know. Cancel this. Uh, what is it again? Only on the TriStar Gym channel do we do crazy stuff like this. Audio input, text, counter, AD. How do you add the video? Ah, here we go, gentlemen. Button pushing extraordinaire. Here it is, my friends. I was born to push these buttons. Aha. Uh Aha, -huh. uh -huh, my friends. Hold on a second. Hold on a second, gentlemen. I'm about to make this happen. All right, my friend, let us know in the chat who you, which one of these two guys you are. I'm about to razzle dazzle you guys. Here it is, gentlemen. Here it is. Which one of these guys are you? Did he answer, guys? Repeat his answer for me. Second wave, what? Is he the red belt? He's in the red belt. Okay, gentlemen, I think he's the guy in the red belt. I'm going to play this again. And we're going to have some fun. All right, let's see. He's the guy in the red belt. You better win this match, my boy. All right, here it is. We're playing it. Nice sprawl. Here we go. Chase the back. Snap down. Keep his hands on the mat. No, you got to keep his hands on the mat when you sprawl him. All right, here we go. A little wrestling. Snap down. 
There you go. Keep it basic, man. I like it. Oh, that's it. That's all she wrote, is it? Mm, there she is. You got to adjust your back take. Ugh, you're a bit off. Good sprawl. Good sprawling ability here. That's it. Avoid the guillotine. Go behind. That's it. There you go. Back to another snap down, I imagine. Yeah, you're doing good with that snap down. He pulled guard. Is that two points? You got two points? You got two points for him pulling guard? All right, let's see here. Pass the guard quite easily. Again, this is a white belt fight. Here you can get an easy mount here. This guy is not too ready to do uh, much about it. You could tell, you could tell by the way the guys holding his legs like he's just he's just not uh, ready to elbow escape. Mount him right here. All right, let's fast forward here where we got side control. I'm going to fast forward this a little bit. This ain't exactly Gaethje versus Holloway. I'm going to fast forward this. No offense, you know, but uh, <laughs> after UFC 300, this just doesn't, doesn't do it for us no more. I was just talking about desensitization. We got desensitized by Holloway, Gaethje fights, and now we're watching this. I'm fast forwarding it a little more. Oh, you mounted it. Oh, three quarter mount. Still, oh my God. Thank God I forwarded this. Okay, you finally mount him. <laughs> All right, man. That was pretty cool. Thank you for sharing. Hold on. Let me. Okay, what can I say about your first BJJ match? Um. It was no UFC 300. Let's just call it that. Listen, your basics were way better than the guy. The other guy had no guard. He had no elbow escape. And um, look, keep it up, man. You guys are at white belt level. You know, you guys are still learning the basics. Master those basics. That's all I could say. <laughs> He's better than what I could do. Way to go. That's from Underbicht. His sprawls are legit. That's from Tyler. Yes, your sprawls were good, man. I, I gotta say, I do I do like your sprawls. Of course, you're always gonna get a little bit of hate in the chat room. It's to be expected, but mostly positive. What are some good pieces of equipment you recommend for advanced athletes besides hip thruster? That's from Hassan Haytham. Um, I really love the Airdyne. Really, the Airdyne's amazing. I have uh, one of those elite um, assault runners, you know, the treadmill with no motor. I really love that as well. Um, everything else after is kettlebell and barbell, like basics. I love sled pushing. If you have the place, if you have the room, sled pushing is phenomenal. There's so many great exercises out there. Uh, barbell, uh, kettlebell, uh, Olympic lifting, hex bar. I really like that stuff. The basics, guys. Get really, really good at it. That's the thing about fitness. Also, fitness is about the basics. Everybody's doing some new age, uh, super f trendy. And there's nothing wrong with that. If that's what motivates you, there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm telling you, the basics are also super important. Okay, guys, with that said, I want to thank you all for tuning in. I had a blast as usual. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to check out jujiclub.com. Use level up 50. Uh, it's right. The, the promo code is on your screen. Level up 50 off. Check in the description for the promo code and make sure to get anything off Juju Club 50% off. Lots of new videos coming to Juju Club starting next week. Lots of new projects coming out. See you all in the next episode. Thank you.